Dear students, welcome you all to this video lecture. This is Anne Mani Andan, Assistant Professor of Physics from Government College of Engineering, Bodhi Naikino. In this video lecture, we are going to see about IC applicators and stress due to bending in beams. This topic is blank to first unit properties of matter in the paper Engineering Physics PH 8151. Let us move to the topic IC applicators. What is girder? Load bearing beam is called girder. It is an example of non uniform bending. When a beam is used as a girder for a given load, depression must be minimum. How to minimize the depression? In non uniform bending, the depression produced at the midpoint is given by small y equal to capital MG L cube divided by 4B D cube capital Y. Here M is the mass, G is the acceleration due to gravity, L is the distance between the two knife edges, B is the breadth of the beam, D is the thickness of the beam. Capital O is the X modulus of the middle of the beam. For a given load Mg, depression Y is directly proportional to L cube, inversely proportional to B, D cube and Y respectively. For minimum value of depression, X modulus Y of the beam should be large, breadth B and Thickness D of the beam must also be large. The length should be as small as possible. But for a given beam, length is fixed and cannot be decreased. Since the depression Y is inversely proportional to D cube, the depression can be reduced more effectively by Increasing the thickness D rather than increasing the breadth B of the beam. If we load the beam after increasing the thickness, the beam bend like as on the figure. That is, the beam bend like this. This type of bending is called buckling buckling of the beam. Girder experiences maximum stress due to elongation on the lowest surface and maximum stress due to compression of uppermost surface. So the maximum amount of material will have to be located at these portions of maximum stress. Hence the beam is designed to have a large thickness to minimize depression and a large load bearing surface to prevent buckling. So the modification need to the girder as shown in the figure. Look at here, the upper and lower portions broadened, middle portion tapered. The material removed here. Here the load bearing surface is large. This look like English letter I. Therefore, this is called I applicators. Now we can easily define what is girders. The girders with upper and lower sections broadened and a middle section tapered so that it can withstand heavy loads over it is called as I-shaped girders. Since the girder look like the letter I, they are known as I-shaped girders. What are the applications of I-shaped girders? I-shaped girders are used in supporting beams for construction of buildings. They are used in construction of bridges over rivers. Ice-shaped girders are very much useful in railway tracks. 
and construction of dams. What are the advantages of ICFD graders? ICFD graders are more stronger. ICFD graders have more stability and high durability. Okay, then let us move to the next topic. Stress due to bending in beams. Consider a bent beam like this. In this beam, AB is the topmost filament of the beam. CD is the bottommost filament of the beam. MN is the neutral axis of the beam. Now, consider a filament PQ above the neutral axis at a distance x. Due to the bending, the filament PQ increases in length. Therefore, there is a change in length. M1 is the neutral axis. The bending beam for forms an arc of a circle. The radius of circle is capital R. This arc, this arc length suspended, subtended a yeah, angle theta. Now, what is the linear strain value on a filament PQ? Linear strain equal to change in length divided by original length. It is PQ minus M1 divided by M1. PQ, PQ is the element considered as a distance x from the neutral axis divided by M1. Here, arc length is determined by radius of curvature and the angle theta. Here, PQ is the distance x from the neutral axis. Therefore, the arc length of the PQ is r plus x into theta minus arc length of the neutral axis is a minus r theta divided by r theta. Simplify this expression, we get x by r. We know that the Young's modulus is equal to linear stress divided by linear strain. Here, the stress is called bending stress sigma. Therefore, sigma equal to linear strain into Young's modulus. Sigma equal to x by r into capital Y. Here, x is the distance of the filament from the neutral axis or the radius of curvature capital is the x modulus in the middle of the beam. Here x by r is constant for a particular cross section of the beam. Therefore, bending stress can be calculated at a particular cross section is proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. Above the neutral axis, the filaments of the beam are elongated and below the neutral axis, the filaments of the beam are Compressed. See here, if this is a neutral axis, above the neutral axis, the filaments are elongated. Below the neutral axis, the filaments are compressed. At the topmost filament, the stress is maximum. And similar to that, the bottommost filament has maximum stress. Here, above the neutral axis, the bending stress is called inside stress. Below the neutral axis, the bending stress is called compressive stress. Because the above the neutral axis, the filaments are elongated. Therefore, the, uh, the stress involved in this 
case is when uh, is the tensile stress below the neutral axis the filaments are compressed therefore the stress involved in this case is compressive stress okay thank you